一个啊，大家有吃饱吼 ？OK， 好 OK。The world is my playground. In 2001, I graduated from MIT. Masan Li Gong, she made in Taiwan, huh? I graduated from MIT in 21S. Now, before any of you say, "Oh, MIT, oh, can you fix my computer?" or "Oh, I have this really, you know, complicated math problem to solve," uh-uh. I graduated in 21S. Now, for those of you who are non-beavers or non-MITers, what that basically means. Is that I graduated from the world's top engineering school with a degree in Spanish. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> okay, so I love I love to travel. I love I learned languages because I love to travel. It is my passion. And, you know, and traveling, yes, you do need languages. But sometimes I always tell my friends, you don't necessarily need to be able to speak a language to have a great traveling experience. For example, there was a time when I went to Cambodia. Now we went to see Angkor Wat, and it was great. Everything was awesome. And there's some vendors outside that were selling some things that looked a little bit like barbecue, kao ro. And I was like, oh, okay, that looks really good. So I went over there, and I was like, oh, excuse me, what is this? Is this chicken or beef? Oh, is that pork? Their reply was, um, gum, 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 gum. That's a fluent Cambodian, by the way. Then I said, "Okay, how how do I how do I get my point across? Okay, I obviously cannot speak Cambodian. They can't speak English. I was like, 'Okay, sorry, excuse me. Um, is this chicken? <laughs> oh, this guy was very very happy because now we finally had a way to communicate, right? So he's like, 'Oh, <laughs> excellent. So I bought two, you know, two little kebab things, and you know, I started eating it. And as I was, I was eating it, I was like, 'This is not chicken. You know, in the States, we eat.'" Chicken breast, we chicken McNuggets. This thing, it was like it was a little bit crunchy on the inside. It's like fey fey, you know, a little fatty, and there's crispy on the outside. This is this is no chicken. So I went back to the vendor. I was like, chicken, <laughs> very very happy. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction to chicken butt. <laughs> so you do. Language is a, is a great thing, and traveling, like I said, is my passion. And I, I really wanted to always do something that involved traveling in my profession. Like I, I wanted to think, what can I do in my career that involves something that I really love, which is traveling. I always thought it was going to be as a doctor. I wanted to be inspiring. I wanted to make a difference in the world. I wanted to come to TED and give a speech. You know, it was all things that I wanted to do as a doctor. As luck would have it, right after I graduated. I got a job here in Taiwan with the, at Rongzong and Tianmu Xiaofangdui. I was working as an emergency medical technician, and、um, I was really excited to come to Taiwan. It was the first time I came to Taiwan. My parents are both, you know, Taiwanese, but I couldn't speak any Chinese. Well, like Taiwanese is in Ganyi Hakong Taiwan way. Actually, that's not true. I could say three things in Chinese. Very simple stuff. You know, Ni Hao. You know, that's every you know easy. Hello, and then Xie Xie. That's easy too. 我姓谢嘛 So thank you. And then the last one was what my friends taught me. They said, "Okay, Taiwanese are some of the nicest people in the world. They're very friendly. You must be very polite. You must say 'Hello, nice to meet you.' 你要说你好，你的头很大 I got tricked. You see. So here I was in Rongzong Veterans General Hospital, going around to all these big top shot, you know, hot shot doctors, saying, "Hello, you have a very large head." <laughs> Anyways, it was because of this opportunity that I had、um, at Rongzong that I came to Taiwan, got to learn a little bit of my heritage, and it was also at that point that somebody, in, you know, came up to me and said, "Hey, do you want to be a model?" I was like, well, "Okay, well, sure, why not? Why not?" So I did it. It was fun, and then the opportunity came up to come back and actually be a model here in Taiwan. But that meant I had to give up medical school. Ooh, that didn't go well with the parents. In fact, my dad's in this right there right now. I remember what he was thinking. He was thinking, "Ah, I go show. I just do this. Come here, do do this. Ah, I go show." It was a tough decision. I really, really struggled with this. I was like, you know, well, I've been preparing my whole life to be a doctor, but now this opportunity has come up to be a model. It's, it's not something I ever really planned to do, but it, you know, it's something exciting. It's something new, different, and then it was really difficult to to decide to, to choose this. First, I had to convince my parents; that was very hard. Then I had to convince myself; that was even harder. 
But you know what, what finally helped me make that decision was I thought, you know, if I really want to do something, if I really want to be a doctor, when I'm 40, 50, 60, I can be. I can go back to school. Sure, it'll be a little bit more difficult, but it is possible. Nothing is impossible. You know, I can be a doctor at 60 years old. If I want to come back to Taiwan and be a model as a 60-year-old, <laughs> that might be a little bit more difficult. So I took the risk. I came back to Taiwan and I started doing, you know, modeling work. And yeah, there was ups and downs, you know. I started from nothing. I mean, I studied at MIT, okay? We didn't have to do any sort of like taking picture type thing. You know, I remember my first modeling experience. They're like, okay, smile for us, okay. Okay, now, okay, do a little bit of um, like a sweet smile, okay. Okay, do something sexy, okay. <laughs> that, was, that was how I started. You know, but eventually I thought, okay, this is, this is it. I'm, I'm pretty much done with it. I want to go back home. I think I'm ready. You know, things weren't exactly going exactly how I wanted. This wasn't really, really what I wanted to do. And right before I left, another friend of mine, she said, well, there's this audition uh, for a show called Fun Taiwan, Fong Taiwan. Do you want to go? I was like, well, okay, sure, why not? So I went there and I went to the audition and by some, you know, luck, some chance, they said, okay, you know, we want, we want you to be the host. And so I thought, okay, well, here I was ready to go back to the States again. And now somebody's offering me a job to go around, experience all these cool things, meet all these new people and pay me. Cool. <laughs> so I took the job. Now, it is my dream job. Like, it really is something I absolutely love. But don't get me wrong, I had my fair share of mistakes. You know, when I first started, again, the language problem. I remember I was, I was being all confident. Um, this was Guo Ye Ye. He's a 79-year-old surfer in Ilan, very famous. He, he's done a Centrum, you know, commercial, if you've seen it. And uh, my producer, he's trying to encourage me. He's like, okay, you need to lead him. You know, because you're the host. So I was like, okay, okay, well, I'll lead him, I'll lead him, okay, okay. So then we got to this, you know, we got to the set, we're filming, and, and it's me and Guo Ye Ye, and I was like, okay, I want to use my Chinese, okay, I'm really good, okay, here it goes. Okay, 五四三二一, okay, we're filming. And I was like, hey, Guo Ye Ye, hey, can you lead me to the wind? Yeah, basically, I just told Mr. Guo to um, vagina me to go surfing. No wonder he looks so happy in this photo. <laughs> But you know, this, it has been a tough job, and a lot of people don't know this, but we work 10 to 14 days. That's 100 plus hours of footage for one show, for 47 minutes of Fun Taiwan. I mean, we really do work very, very hard. And there's days when I'm like, oh my God, have I made the right decision? Did I do the, you know, have I made the right choice? But in the end of the day, I, I look back at my life and I'm like, yeah, you know what? This is what I love to do. This is my dream job. I mean, who gets to do this for a living? You know, who gets to, to climb to the top of Jade Mountain, swim with dolphins, and, and uh, play violin while rock climbing, <laughs> and um, feed sharks? <laughs> okay, a lot of people are looking at this video going, I don't want to feed sharks for a living. Are you crazy? <laughs> but really, I wake up every single day excited about work. You know, this is, this is what I really, really love to do. And I'm lucky, I'm lucky that I have this opportunity, this, you know, this, this job to do things that I love. And, um, you know, there are, there are times really when I, when I look at my team and they, they also work very, very hard. You know, you really have to love what you're doing to be able to wake up every day and enjoy what you're doing and be passionate about it. You know, we've been filming Fun Taiwan, Fun Asia now for five, five years, almost six years. And people ask me, like, how do you have enough energy? How do you, don't you get bored or aren't you get, don't you get tired? But, you know, I can honestly say that, I, I mean, I do love what I'm doing. Who gets to wake up in the morning and fly a seaplane for work? Unless you're a seaplane pilot, I guess. Uh, this was uh, on a recent trip that we just took in, in uh, Queensland. We went to Queensland, Queensland, that bien. And, uh, and this was my first time ever flying a plane. I, I don't have a license. Uh, and I was just, you know, so, so excited. I was in a in a in a So what happened is this is a small seaplane. We have me, the pilot, the two cameramen. One is filming outside, one is filming me. 
And then we have two people in the back, the, the, the sound guy and also um, the, the production assistant. And this is my ending. So the ending for the whole episode. So I'm really, really excited. And I'm, I'm, I'm flying the plane, right? And I'm looking at the camera. He's behind me, basically the audience. And I want to prove to the audience. OK, so I'm like holding the plane. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so awesome. Can you believe I'm flying a plane? I'm really flying a plane. See? <laughs> no, really, it's in OK. How many of you have flown a plane? I don't know if you know this, you probably know this, but you don't only just go left and right, you can actually go up and down too. So of course, this is what I also had to prove to the audience. So I was like, hey, it's in the Kai Wang Sang Wa Xia, and you can So here I was having the time of my life, you know, like flying the plane. And then we get out, we arrive, you know, we land the plane, and you know, I'm like, oh yeah, this is so cool, this is so cool. And then I turn back and I'm like, wasn't that awesome, y'all? And I was looking at the team and uh yeah, things are so much different when you're actually in control, when you're actually behind the wheel. One trip, boy, yeah. I am constantly still making these mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I mean, language is still always a problem, and I still always make make mistakes. Like just recently, actually, I was I was learning Taekwondo, and um, you know, when when Taekwondo, you have to do certain kicks, and you have to kind of use your use your waist sometimes use your hips right so i'm asking the teacher and i'm like okay so i want to know like when you do the sidekick do you do you use your waist do you use your you know your hips right so i said eh all the time i mean really i i make some of the some of the worst most embarrassing mistakes you know another another thing that i did recently we were at the, the press conference for a boat launch. And I'm very nervous because I had everybody there, you know, Hao Long Bin and Ma Ying Zhou, everybody was there at this press conference. And, and here I am holding my, you know, my, my notes, and it's all in Chinese, and I can't really read Chinese, it's all in, you know, pinyin. So I'm like, okay, um, this is the Huang Hou Hao, you know, Zhou Ma. It's a big boat launch. And I'm like, okay, live cameras everywhere, everybody's looking at me, you know, all these legislators, all these important VIP looking at me, and I'm like announcing, and I'm like, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, again, I basically accidentally told Mr. Uh, Mayor Ma to uh, thank you for sleeping with all of us. <laughs> These are mistakes that I make constantly in my, in my job, but I'm lucky that I have a job that I really feel passionate about. And um, so, I mean, basically what, I, what I'm trying to do, I know everybody says, oh, well, you're, you're lucky, you're easy. You know, you have a dream job. Of course, you're going to love what you're doing. But that's not necessarily true. You know, it's like you don't have to be a travel show host to love what you do every single day. So yes, play. I do get to play every day. That is my job. But what I hope everybody takes away from, you know, today, from my speech today, is that passion is really, really vital. You know, when I was going through all the stories that I wanted to, to talk about today, and I was going through all the moments of play that I've had in my, laugh, in my life, I really have to thank Ted, you know, thank you for reminding me that I can make play a living. I can make a living out of play. You know, play can be part of my life, part of my career. And I really believe that be passionate about something. Do what you're passionate about. Be passionate about what you do. I always believe in this phrase that somebody told me. Um, if you love your job, you will never have to work a day of your life. And I think taking that home with me, I was like, you know what? That is so true. I don't have to work a single day of my life because I'm enjoying life as it is. You know, I'm enjoying my everyday experiences. And I hope that everybody else is able to do that as well. Um, you know, I have a favorite quote uh, from college that I always, I always share with my friends. And it's, you can only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. So I encourage everybody, go play. Chu Wan, Ki Sung, Hakin Ki Sung. And make that your life. 
you know, let the world be your playground. Be it. Thank <laughs> you.